This video is to show how to use Chimera for doing what you used to do in Fledermouse uh, Hydro or Fledermouse Professional. This is taking data from third party programs like Keras Hips, HiPack 8 MB Max, and, um, and also GSF files, FAU files. Uh, there were a number of different file types um, that were already processed into an XYZ format, which would then bring into Fledermouse and would be validated and edited using the PFM architecture. We've moved that functionality into Chimera now, and this will show you how it can be done. So the first thing you need to do is create a project, and you create that here, give it a project name. Uh, this is the default location for the projects. Um, if this is a lat long data coming in and you want it in UTM zone, it will automatically choose it. If this is easting and northern data coming in, or you want it in something that isn't a UTM zone, then you have to uh, specify the coordinate system here. Now, with Chimera, you're prompted along the way to do things when things are in a certain uh, format. So the first thing you're asked here is to whether you want to bring in raw sonar data or process point files. Process point files is what we're going to be dealing with because they are already in an XYZ format. So we do add process point files. Uh, you can choose files individually as a directory, or in this case, I'm going to choose a HIPS project. So I click on the add HIPS button, and then you need to point the project at the HDCS folder in your, uh, in your HIPS project. So this is my HDCS folder. Now this is going through the HIPS uh, dongle so because you need to have that in because it's licensed libraries. You choose the project you want and in here you then choose what day or all days or the whole project whichever you want uh, to bring in and then you just hit OK. Confirm that it's WGS84, it could be ETRS89 or NAD83 or whatever you've got set in your HIPS project and then just do OK. Uh, this will then take the data in and as it takes it, it's extracting the, uh, the line files. This is a little bit like how it happened in uh, DMagic, but uh, the, one of the nice things we have in Chimera is the possibility to have an ENC background. And if you have the ENCs already in the system, it finds where the line is and it will automatically put it in the location and bring up the ENC behind it, uh, which, is, which is kind of a nice, nice feature. So what is happening here is it's now going through and uh, extracting all that information and it does this quite quite quickly as you can see um, here is just it's just listing the files at the moment one of the options you have is to regroup them and you can regroup them by file path uh, here we're only under one uh, folder at the moment uh, so it's just uh, the li individual lines are under under one folder I'll show you in a moment where you have a whole hips project and you can see how each day comes in here as well once you have the, uh, the files in here, then what you do is, same as in DMagic, is um, you're going to create, in this case, a dynamic surface, and the dynamic surface is the replacement, or the not replacement, but the next generation uh, from PFM, which is what was used in Fledermouse. So you select the files that you want. You then have the option here to create a dynamic surface. Uh, the dynamic surface here, you can give it a name if you would like. You can specify the cell size. You can also specify if you want cube processing. Uh, you can look at the uh, settings for the cube and what we have default settings for now is for shallow water. And this captured radius here, 0.71, is fixed to the cell size here. This is uh, settings that are in use by uh, UKHO and NOAA for surveys uh, that they want as a cube deliverable. Uh, this seems to be the best solution for shallow water, so this is what we've used as a default for the program. We also have the deep water server, a custom one, uh, and the original cube default settings are in, in that one here. Uh, one of the things you'll see now is that you, before you had to, with the PFM, you had to specify the bounds of the PFM in X, Y, and Z. You don't have to do that anymore. You can just let it go or include all data, and it will just add the data in as it goes. If you then come to add more uh, lines to a dynamic surface, you can keep growing it. So there's no risk of losing data on the way in like there was with a PFM. If you're doing a small area within a larger area, you can also specify the bounds here. And when you OK this, 
The next thing it's asking you for is where are my TPU calculations. Uh, here is they're going to read them directly from the HDCS data, same as if it's uh, GSF data or HS2 data that will be in there. If it's um, uh, uh, FAU data, then you'll have to specify either something which grows with depth or specify a, uh, a fixed one for each individual sounding. Uh, I wouldn't use this option here. Uh, it gives too uh, uh, relaxed, or the, the errors are too high to create a good solution. Uh, when you say OK now, it's going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is to take those HDCS files and convert them to a QPD format. QPD format is our internal XYZ format for bathymetry. And that's also got an added attribution as well in there. And then once it's finished converting the files to QPD, it will then create the dynamic surface based on those parameters that you gave it. Now, if you have data that's already uh, in place, like here, uh, this is um, the shallow survey data from uh, from R2 Sonic for uh, 2012, and um, and you can see you've got I've got different dynamic surfaces over here on the right, um, so you can have many dynamic surfaces in here. Uh, you have your hips project here with the different uh, looking at the different folder structure so this is all regrouped by file path here so it's reading directly off the file path um, and and over here we can select different ones here and if you want to zoom in once you've selected your dynamic surface you can use this button here which is going to zoom to that selected object uh, within uh, we have two this is a 2d view which is what comes up by default in the 3d view uh, this is your familiar Fledermaus uh, uh, view. The ENC is not shown in the 3D view at the moment, um, but the but it is in the 2D view. Uh, here I've got it coloured. Uh, I've got the shallow layer. You've also got the deep averaging cube like you have with the PFM, uh, and you've also got the coloured by options like you had with the PFM as well. So height standard deviation is always good when you're dealing with uh, cleaning data and uh, and error checking. Um, and you can change the color map here. And also if you want, you can adjust the color map, so that's bringing up the histogram. And here I've selected going from a user range of 0 to 0.5 for standard deviation, just to bring out where those spikes in the data are. Um, the differences now between uh, Fledermaus and, uh, and Chimera are in, uh, we have a new editor. So we have two editors up here. We have a two, the uh, slice editor and we have the 3D editor. 3D editor is the same as it was in Fledermaus. 2D editor is a, is a brand new tool. And we have different ways of accepting, uh, of selecting data as well. So the rectangular select you're used to, but one of the uh, features that people wanted in Fledermaus for a long time was to be able to rotate that box. So as you move your icon or your mouse to the middle, the changes from uh, being a moving icon to a rotating icon and that allows you to to rotate. Um, the polygon uh, select is the same as it is in Fledermaus and now with the area select is also here from the 3D editor into the main display. Uh, these ones down here are to be used with the slice editor and these are selecting different sort of boxes so this one will select a, a box with a with a subset in it, slice in it and that's what we'll show here in the slice editor. Uh, this one here allows you to move the, the internal box around a lot more and this one here is a specific path which I'll show you in a moment. But if I choose to uh, just to go in here to and choose this uh, spike here, I'll do it in the 2D editor for the first thing. And you'll see here, this is our uh, lines. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see that it's also drawing the points inside the, the, the main display. And as you move around in here, you can see there's a white ball on the top, and that will show you which point you're actually looking at. So this is really useful to see whether it's a feature or not a feature. At the same time as you have this date window here, um, this is the 2D surface edit overview that comes up. And you can see here what has already been done and what you're about to do on the data. So if I zoom in a bit more closely on this one here, you'll see that some are red and some are uh, are just white. The white means it's been inspected but nothing has been edited in there. The red means that you've actually edited data inside that pipe. And this is occurs uh, automatically when you clean when you clean data. It can be turned on and off in terms of 
uh, whether it's visible or not, but it will always um, always be there. Uh, and here you've got different ways in the 2D editor now in the slice editor of selecting. You've got a square box, you've got a rectangle, and you've got a polygon. And you have different ways over here of how those edits will be applied. If they're going to be applied manually, which means you've, you're forced to actually hit the save button, automatically, which is uh, when you move to another area, it will automatically save it. And instantly, as soon as you do anything here, it will be updated. So it's up to you how you want to, to do that. I'll leave it on automatic. So here, if I select my those uh, ones there, it will reject those automatically. That's what it's got in the uh, with the minus sign there. If you hold any of these down, you can also accept as well. Um, what it's looking at here is color by line at the moment or file. Uh, you can also change it to be by system if you have more than one system, ping, beam, intensity, all those ones as well. So if I just hit save now, it will, same way as a PFM, it will update the surface, it will update the soundings, it will update the statistics in there as well. Uh, I can also come and click over here and uh, rather than having to, I can move it and it will just load it back in. Um, and I can then do that. If I then click come over to this one and say, okay, I've done that one. If you hold on the Alt key and click on there, that will go over to that next area. And again, you can do that and it will, it will move on. So you can, if you're validating data or if you're looking at spikes and wanting to clean it through, this is how you could do it. And as you move around, you'll see uh, where you've been will start becoming uh, affected. Now, if you're editing data and um, uh, and you don't want to do it manually, uh, we have tools that we brought in from uh, from another QPS product called Cloud, which is the spline filter. And uh, if I come out of my 2D editing at the moment, if I select an area like this, just zoom in a bit more so you can see it. And then one of the things we have is the spline filter here. Now, if you're doing hydro survey work, I would suggest doing it weekly. If you're doing a um, uh, a dredging survey or uh, or an oil and gas survey where the uh, absolute uh, shoal soundings aren't uh, aren't what people what's looked for, then you can use a stronger uh, spline filter here. Um, it will do it will spline. One of the options is to do it on all the files or just the surface files. So this dynamic surface here contains is only going to do it on the files that are contained inside that surface. Um, and you can do it either inside this selection, uh, you can do it on the whole um, area, or you can do it outside that selection if you wanted to keep a particular rec uh, free. Uh, and then you click on this button here, it goes into those files, it uh, runs the spline filter through, uh, it updates it, and, and it's really very quick to, uh, uh, to, to do. And that saves a lot of, a lot of um, editing. Now, if you did this over a rec, so if I do that over this area here, and uh, and and this is uh, what you're looking at, say as a, a as a hydrographic agency, then one of the things I can do here, if I select uh, this uh, area here, move it around, and then I want to go into my 3D editor. Then, uh, so this is the uh, the same uh, 3D editor as in uh, as in Fledermouse. If I look at the rejected data, and then I can do select by, select by spline filtered, and that's now selecting the data that was just rejected by that spline filter. So you can see what's been taken out and what's been what's been left in, and if you feel that too much has been taken out, uh, you can unreject that data, and then uh, save and exit, and it will go back in and it will update the uh, the data, uh, the data. So you're not losing anything with the spline filter, and this way you can actually see exactly what's happened to it. Uh, the other thing that um, uh, you'll be doing in the 3D editor, not the 2D slice, is if you're doing cube processing, because cube processing is still in here, and you have options like you had before. These are all exactly the same to be able to select by the shoal is sounding, to be able to say, okay, I'm going to make that a feature flag, so that will be sent back as a designated sounding or a feature sounding depending on the original format um, and then also if I make it a custom hypothesis and then that's where that sounding that su uh, cube surface is at the level of that sounding uh, and then if I save and exit that will update the cube surface as well so the difference is that, well, the main benefits for using Chimera over Fledermouse is the fact that 
uh, the dynamic surface is much faster, it's multi-cored everywhere, um, it, um, <clears throat> there's no need to set any bounds, you can get rid of, uh, you can import and, and, uh, and, and remove uh, different survey lines very easily from it. Um, you've also got the new spline filtering tools, the new ways of viewing the, uh, the data, because um, I haven't shown this last one here, which is just this is specifying a, your own line to follow. So that's a left click and a right click. Then you go into the uh, uh, to the slice mode, and the, this is gaming keys now. So W moves it forwards, S moves it back, A would move it left, and D would move it right. And as you go through here, you can go through and uh, specify. You know, you can flick through. So, so it gives you a lot of control over your data cleaning. Once you're happy that all the data cleaning has been done, and uh, then you can unload the changes back. So the same way as you unloaded a PFM, this will unload the, the changes back to the original uh, source files. So in this case, back to the HIPS files. So you do it on a particular dynamic surface, and when you do unload changes, it will, view, it will look at all the files that are built into this particular surface. Not all the files in the project, just for this particular surface. Uh, you can then say OK, and it will go back, and it will change the accepted rejected flags in those files. So the functionality here is exactly the same as it was in, uh, in Fledermouse, um, but it also make life much faster and there's some real um, excellent new tools to be able to make uh, better decisions and faster decisions on the data.